candidly, I don't know, twice as hard as the right ratio, but yes, much harder. Much harder. Uh, yeah. Uh, most, most venture capitalists are men. Most venture capitalists are not millennial men. Um, They're old men. So I'll say it. They're when old we men. reach I'm 46 as an angel and they consider me young. <laughs> when we reach female millennials, they're not going to jump out of their seats immediately yeah. understanding the problem we're trying to solve when we, when right. we go in for the pitch. Um, what I always default to is that the data, you know, drives everything. We've, we've doubled our revenue and our growth every year since the beginning of the business. Huh. Um, we, you know, our charts are hockey sticks. We look like that uh, in our decks and, and we have crazy partnerships that are coming mm. to play now. We, you know, we have, you know, really, we just launched uh, classes on JetBlue, um, learn nice. on the fly. Um, we, have, the fly. we have Verizon as a partner now. We're doing some interesting things with TV networks now. So there's a lot that, you know, every year is compounding mm. and, and that typically sways them. But I wouldn't say that they're like dying to be part of, you know, investing in Britain Co. from the start. Do you resent the fact that you have to show the performance in order to get the investment, whereas men let's be candid, they can put up a deck and if they went to the right school or they got the right technical skills, can get funded without the performance. And head to head, it's been shown and proven that men get more funding with less performance. It's been proven now in studies. It's been proven. Um, uh, yeah. I, or do you the, just put it out of your mind and just say, screw it, I'm I just going to focus on I work with the guys at Slow Ventures on occasion yeah. when they're looking at deals um, in the media or commerce space or anything female related. And, um, and, and so I do see some of the decks that the men make too. And like, I wouldn't say all of them are spectacular, even if they have a Harvard business degree. Um, so I wouldn't say it's 100%. I do think there's some variation of like, it's a little bit easy. It, you know, it's like, let's go like hang out and like drink, have cigar, smoke cigar. Let's yeah. go play golf. Let's go like do this. Did you see the Warriors play last night. That was awesome. Right. Um, so the, the male bro founders can start on second base. And yeah, there's a just little a little bit, bit more. And it's the same with women. Like yeah. I was talking to your hair and makeup person backstage right. and we were like instant best friends. You right. know, there's girl talk. You know, we just, it's a it's a human thing. I don't judge Silicon Valley So with for the female it. venture capitalists, you feel you get there quicker if you yeah. pitch in Aileen Lee from Cowboy totally. Ventures. Do you feel like she's, she just grocks it quicker? Yes. And there's 100%. obviously less bias, bias there. Yeah. And she's, she's smart, too. She's not going to invest in something just because it's a female founder. Like, right. people look at the data. There's diligence that goes into this, especially in Series C and beyond, right? Yeah. Um, so, so I know that we have to have the numbers to support it. But that story, that mission, the why, which is so important, I think, mm. is eas more easily grokked by the women. There is a study that just came out. I don't know if you saw it. It said men who have daughter VCs who have daughters that mm -hmm. are 12 years old or above actually invest more in female founders. Um, certainly then, true for me and I have three daughters under seven so yeah well, I am, well imagine what's going to happen when they're over 12 um, well at this point it's really interesting like I there is something about when you have when you see the unfairness in the world on a gender basis and you see that 84 cents of the dollar when you don't have kids mm -hmm. and you're just like wow that sucks but like you know but when you have daughters, all of a sudden it's like, mm, this is an imperative now. Like, yeah. we got to fix this now. Right. And I think that does, that is something. You also, there's, the thing I love about investing in female founders, and you can tell me if this resonates, is that there's a level of seriousness and the things that are not important going to Web Summit or the TED conference or being a TEDx Boise, Idaho, or Southern nonsense, or being selected as the Web Summit top. The ego. What? Yeah, this ego, ego kind of nonsense. Yeah. Like, and uh, like, you know, I, I, should I go on Shark Tank or not? Just like, <laughs> I'm constantly fielding questions from male founders mm. that are so nonsensical and non-core to their business mm. that I want to strangle them sometimes. I just grab them by the lapels moment <laughs> and just saying like, this does not matter. Right. Fortune Forbes whatever, 40 under 40, 50 under 30, 30 yeah. under 15, I don't, it does not matter. And then the female founders are like, I'm trying to hire this person. I can't close them. Can you help me close them? Or right. I need to get a meeting with Target. I need to, yeah. we need to increase our revenue. We need to lower our CAC. Like it's right. very tactical. Yep. Resonate or no? Totally. Yeah. Um, I think women are just more operational in that regard. We don't have as big of ego. I, in fact, like one thing I've said before is that I think women have to be more, um, 
have more egos. Like yeah. we, we don't sell ourselves enough. Uh, right. and, and, and that's a huge disparity I see even between the way my husband functions as an entrepreneur yeah. and, and myself. Um, you know, I'm very honest. We, yeah. We're too honest as women. We have to be a little bit dishonest and, and go play. Like, of course we're going to triple our revenue when we've yeah. doubled ever. Like, obviously, like, you know, like no practical doubt about it. A little delusional. A little delusional yeah. instead of practical. Yeah. I want to first thank my friend Scott Walker for supporting startups, not just supporting This Week in Startups, but startups themselves. Walker Corporate Law, as you know, is a boutique law firm that specializes in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups. That's what they do. And they encourage fixed fees. What's that? They give you a fixed price. You know what you're going to pay to do your startup financing, to do your corporate formation, to do your trademarks, to do whatever you need to do, employee stock option plan, licensing, mergers, acquisitions, terms of service, privacy policy, all those things that are check boxes for your startup. They do uh, with lawyers that have decades of experience, 10, 20 years, no junior associates getting on the job training, and they specialize in startups. That's why they're so good at it. That's why they can give you fixed fees, and they're really in it for the right reason. Scott Walker comes to all of our events. He's a real true mensch, and he spends a lot of time talking to founders, and you can call him directly right now, 415-979-9998. 415, that's San Francisco, 979-9998. Or you can email him, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com, or visit walkercorporatelaw.com. Scott's a great guy. Tell him your Uncle Jason sent you, and he'll take care of you. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 